Hey kids, welcome to Crossways Kid Venture Kids Online. I'm Lauren and this is Maya. Hi everybody! In case you're new at Kid Venture Kids Online, I should let you know that Kid Venture Kids is a great place for kids to learn about God, faith, and even life apps. What are life apps? Life apps are just our way of talking about what God can work out inside of you to change the world around you. Things like love, respect, and forgiveness. And don't forget that we do that with a lot of faith-filled fun to help you grow your faith in Jesus Christ. And don't forget, putting your faith into action kid style. Hey, you can even stand up, sing, and dance with the worship music. And now it's time to get started. Let's start with a drum roll on your knees, everybody. Three, two... Why would I worry? You never show up late And you don't make mistakes I'm not in a hurry No I'm walking at your pace Cause you showed a better way In the night I won't be afraid You by my side So I know I'm okay So I will sing At the top of my lungs
is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey friends, I'm Caleb and it's time to check out my Bible. Inside you'll find 66 different books. We've got history, letters, songs, and words of wisdom. They all fit together to tell the incredible story of how God made the entire world. But people turned away from God. Instead of leaving us on our own, God made an epic plan to restore us to relationship. God sent Jesus to show us how to love God and to love others in everything we do. Jesus was completely truthful in everything he said and did, and that's integrity. And I have five stories to show you what it can look like. We get started in the book of Luke. There it is. Here, Jesus shares with his followers that what's on the inside will always come out. A good tree doesn't bear bad fruit, and a bad tree doesn't bear good fruit. A person's mouth says everything that is in their heart. When we choose to stay connected to Jesus, we'll begin to show love, joy, 
peace, patience, and a whole crop of good things. Time for a quick trip to the Old Testament and the book of 2 Kings. Here, we meet the prophet Elisha and his servant Gehazi. When Elisha helps to heal a foreign army commander through God's power, the man offers him a chariot load of cash. Gehazi's pretty excited until Elisha turns down the money. That's when Gehazi cooks up a crooked scheme to sneak the silver for himself. Let's slide ahead to the book of Daniel. Here, Daniel and his three friends are captured by King Nebuchadnezzar and marched to the distant city of Babylon. King Neb wants to turn them into proper Babylonians. But when Daniel and his friends are ordered to eat the king's food, things hit a snap. They know that eating the food would be wrong, so they're forced to choose. Go with the flow or stand up and risk the king's rage. We stay in Daniel for the next story. King Neb is at it again. He's built a ginormous statue and orders everyone to bow down and worship it. But Daniel's three friends aren't about to worship anyone except the one true God. When King Neb finds out they won't bow, he throws them into a fiery furnace so hot it would turn your s'more to instant ashes. Neb is sure those men are goners until he sees the impossible. <laughs> we wrap up in Paul's letter to the Philippians. Here, Paul reminds his friends that what we put in our minds can change everything. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. The more we focus on who God is, what God has done, and the amazing things God has created, the more our lives reflect that goodness and beauty. What's inside matches up with what's outside as we live truthfully in all we say and do. And that's what true integrity looks like. And I can't wait to see how it shows up in you and me. Hey, what's the big idea? Welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about integrity while we take a look at the tale of two trees. Hmm, I wonder if either tree has a tire swing. Hmm. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about integrity, which is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. So what's up with the tire? My dad got a flat tire. See the nail right here? I mean, we can try to pull it once more. Uh, 
It's like Excalibur. That's not coming out. What's it doing in here? I figured we can use it for something. Tire swing. Dog bed. Workout equipment. Oh, come on, you can do it. I don't come think on. I can do it. You got it. Getting ripped. Our guest today knows his way around a tire. In fact, he's an expert on cars. Seriously? So cool. Yeah, his name is Mike, and he's a mechanic who lives in Ontario. Well, when do we get to meet him? Right now. Hi, Mike. We are so excited to have you on the show with us today. Hey, guys. Pleasure to be here. So we're going to ask you a couple of questions today, Mike. But first, we know you're a mechanic, but... What does a mechanic actually do? Well, just like a doctor, you know, takes care of the body and makes sure, you know, you're healthy when you're sick, I'm kind of like a car doctor. I take care of cars and I make sure when they're not working well, I get them back up to speed. Okay, so how did you get interested in working with cars? Well, it kind of has started as a kid. I've always been interested in small motors and fixing and repairing things. And as a kid, I loved fixing bikes. How did you get started as a mechanic? Well, I actually started at a dealership when I, when I first wanted to be a mechanic. I was fixing cars, but over time, they wanted us to, you know, I felt the pressure to make repairs that really customers didn't really need and do things that, you know, it's not really needed or the customer didn't really want it. So I just didn't feel comfortable that way. And I actually had somebody tell me that I had to be one person at the dealership and one person at home. And that wasn't okay with me. So I left and I went to a smaller shop here. I get to take care of the customers. I do exactly what they want and exactly what we say we're going to do. I do quality work and they're satisfied. So Mike, we can see that you're kind of at a shop right now. So tell me about some of the things that you guys are working on right now. What type of cars? What are you doing to the inside? Just, just give me those details. We get to work on everything here at our shop from small cars to trucks to lawnmowers. Right now, I'm working on this car sitting right here. The customer wants me to make sure that their car is working exactly as it should. So I will check things like here, this is the air filter, where I would make sure that the car's air filter is clean and the engine can breathe. And here, this is the dipstick where the engine oil goes in. It's like the lifeblood of the engine. If it's not good, the engine will not work well. And also, the battery. This is a very essential part of the car. You have to make sure that the battery's in good working order and these connections are nice and tight. Because if they're not, the car may not even start at all. Can you talk more about what it takes to get a car to run really, really well? The best part of it all is you have to take care of what's on the inside. If you don't, eventually the car will break down and maybe not even work at all. So Mike, we know you love working on cars, but we gotta ask, what is your favorite kind of car? Classic cars and hot rods. I absolutely love them. When I'm driving down the road with my kids, we make it a game to pick them out, point them out, check the colors, and really just love the sound of the old hot rods. These cars are awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Your job is so awesome, and it was a pleasure talking to you today. Thanks, guys. Wow, it's like I've got a whole new perspective on what's inside. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today we're in the book of Luke. When God sent Jesus as a baby, angels announced his birth. But for most of his life, Jesus lived quietly and faithfully, loving God and loving others. Around the time Jesus was 30 years old, he came to the Jordan River. God's voice spoke from heaven. You are my son, and I love you. I am very pleased with you. Soon after, Jesus began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. He chose a group of friends to share life with him. In everything Jesus said and did, he showed people what God is like. And over and over, he pointed out that what's on the inside matters most to God. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. And in today's story, well, <laughs> Things are going to get a bit thorny. <clears throat> Jesus had just chosen his 12 closest friends to help in his work. 
and when he came down from the mountain with them, a big crowd gathered. People had come from all over to hear him and be healed. Jesus did make many people well, but he knew that even more than their bodies, it was the people's hearts that needed help. So Jesus began to teach them many things. A good tree doesn't bear bad fruit, and a bad tree doesn't bear good fruit. Uh, well, that makes sense, right? I mean, if you go up to a nice, healthy apple tree and pick one. Mm. But if you find a tree that looks twisted and stunted and pick some fruit, ah, you're not going to want to bite of that. Jesus continued with the word pictures. You can tell each tree by the kind of fruit it bears. People do not pick figs from thorns, and they don't pick grapes from bushes. In the time of Jesus, figs and grapes were a super important part of what people ate. Figs represented peace and prosperity, and grapes stood for joy and celebration. Finding a good grapevine or fig tree was a big deal. But when Jesus and his friends walked the dusty roads, they would have seen other plants too, including thorny, bushy hedgerows and fig trees choked out by brambles. I mean, are you going to find grapes or figs on one of these? No. I think not. It quickly became clear to the crowd, though, that Jesus was talking about more than just trees and vines. A good man says good things. These come from the good that is stored up in his heart. An evil man says evil things. These come from the evil that is stored up in his heart. A person's mouth says everything that is in their heart. Mic drop. A healthy apple tree produces great fruit and an unhealthy tree grows bad fruit. They do it without even trying. And we are just the same. If we are in a healthy place, connected to Jesus, good things will come out of us. Our words and actions will reflect Jesus and be encouraging and helpful to others. But when we try to make it on our own, we get more and more stressed out and grumpy. Like an unhealthy tree grows rotten fruit, our words and actions are more likely to spew out and hurt the people around us. Who you are and how you're doing inside will always come out. You might be able to cover up and pretend everything's great for a while, but eventually, the pressure of trying to keep it together will just be too much. You'll end up saying and doing hurtful things, even if you don't mean to. So clearly, we want to be this and not that. Here's the good news. You get to choose which kind of tree you want to be. The night before he was arrested and gave up his life, Jesus told his friends, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain joined to me and I to you, you will bear a lot of fruit. You can't do anything without me. Boom. There it is. That's the key. Like a branch has to be connected to the vine or tree trunk to survive, we were designed for connection to Jesus. And when we're regularly learning more about Jesus and talking with him, things start to change inside. Over time, we become like good branches growing trees, growing good fruit. Now, being a good tree does not mean that you'll never say or do something hurtful, but it does mean that most of the time, your words and actions will be loving. And when you mess up, you can take it right to Jesus and ask for help. After all, you and every single person you meet are made in God's image. And when you follow Jesus, you can be confident that you will become a good tree, growing good fruit. The end. Okay, so if I were a tree, what would I grow? Hmm, maybe walnuts? Walnuts, not a fruit. Yeah, but you're a little nutty. And you're a lot cheesy. The story, guys. Right. Well, whatever kind, I want to be a good tree. So what's our part in the story? Well, it starts with a choice. You don't live with integrity by accident. The journey begins by choosing to follow Jesus and then to stay connected to him. And there are lots of ways to do that. Oh, for sure. For one of the best ways is to uh, read or listen to scripture about the things Jesus did and said. Love your enemies. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let your light shine before others. My grace is all you need. My power is strongest when you are weak. Yeah, and that's just a start. You can also spend time talking with Jesus in prayer, just like you'd talk with a friend. Yeah, and that means listening, too. When you take time to be still, Jesus might give you a word or a feeling or just a sense that he's there. Even when you get distracted or mess up, 
that's still a great opportunity to reconnect with Jesus. There is nothing you can do that will ever make him love you less. And when you stay connected to Jesus, you can be truthful with your whole life. Yep, you got it. Mm. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Be truthful with your whole life. And stay connected to Jesus. Kind of like how Mike showed us with making sure your car battery is properly connected. So, have you decided what to do with this tire? I'm going to use it as a planter. And grow some good fruit. Or veggies. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Uh, uh, wait, come back. Runaway tire. Proverbs 10, 9. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Gentlemen, head to your race cars. It's go time! Go time. Go time. Three, two, one, go! I win! I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and welcome to the So and So Show. This month we are talking all about integrity. Mm -hmm. When you have integrity, that means you can be trusted. Really? You think you can just come out right out of the gate and announce a big spoiler just like that? Uh, yeah, I think I just did. Well, tell me more. Oh. Who do you think is the most integritous person you know? That is not a word. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, fine. Um, probably my barber. Uh, you sure about that? Hey! You know what? I think I know a better one. Uh, what? Your grandma? Nope. Your mailman? No. Uh, a pit stop worker. A pit stop worker? Yeah, yeah. You know the pit really? crew for race car drivers? The yeah. car rolls into the pit stop and, you know, the crew super quickly makes adjustments to the car, like refueling it or replacing the tires. Right, you know what? I, I think you're right. They do need a lot of integrity. Yeah, right? You've got to be able to trust them. Mm. If they didn't have integrity, they could ruin the race mm. or even get the driver heard. <laughs> they keep you safe, and they help make your dreams come true. It's true. <laughs> so true. Mm. I want to be one. Really? I think pit crew workers have to be super strong, so. What? Ah! I'm strong, but I, I don't like the smell of car exhaust. Oh, well, there goes that dream. No, 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 no. I can, um, oh, 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 what if there were, uh, oh, a pit crew for life? You know, everyday moments that need help, assistance, integrity. I'm not sure about that. Oh, you will be, my friend. You will be.
was fun. Yeah. Now, what else needs my help? Uh, maybe we should just leave things the way they are. Never! <laughs> the door! Yeah! It's Bible story time with Kellen! Woo! No! Can you smell that? Hey guys! Hey Kellen! You know what I like about you, Kellen? Your integritous. Thanks, but that's not a word. Still? Okay, fine. But I see where you're going, and I like it. So what do you have for us today, Kellen? Well, I'm glad you asked. Today is all about fruit. You guys like apples, bananas, oranges? Yeah, definitely. The only way you get fruit is because it grows on a fruit tree. When Jesus was on earth, a lot of the people he met and talked to were farmers and people who knew all about growing fruit trees. So, a few times, that's what Jesus decided to talk to them about. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 6, we read that Jesus says, A good tree doesn't bear bad fruit, and a bad tree doesn't bear good fruit. You can tell each tree by the kind of fruit it bears. People do not pick figs from thorns, and they don't pick grapes from bushes. That makes sense, right? Apples only grow on apple trees. And oranges only grow on orange trees. And only good, healthy trees can produce good, healthy fruit. Now, Jesus taught this lesson about fruit trees so he could actually teach us about people. He went on to say, a good man says good things, these come from the good that is stored up in his heart. An evil man says evil things. These come from the evil that is stored up in his heart. A person's mouth says everything that is in their heart. So people can be like fruit trees. What does that look like? Well, imagine someone who is good. Jesus said a good person has good things stored in their heart. It's like they're a healthy tree. And just like good fruit comes from a healthy tree, good things come out of someone with a healthy heart. Things like kind words, encouragement, and honesty. But there's another kind of person. When a tree isn't healthy, it won't produce good fruit. In the same way, Jesus said that evil things come out of someone with an unhealthy heart things like lies, insults, and hateful words. So, which kind of person would you rather be? Someone who is good, right? Well, then that's the kind of fruit you should bear. You should actually be kind and good. Now, I get it. Sometimes that's more easily said than done. But it's a good thing that Jesus had more to say about the matter. In the Gospel of John, chapter 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. So picture this with me. Picture a big vine growing in a garden. There are so many branches connected to the vine. And some of those branches are bearing fruit and others aren't. Now imagine that Jesus is this big vine and that God is the gardener. Jesus said, God cuts off every branch joined to me that does not bear fruit. He trims every branch that does bear fruit so that it will bear even more fruit. So God takes care of the vine and the branches that are attached to it. Remember, the vine is Jesus and the branches Jesus was talking about are you and me. Next, Jesus says, remain joined to me just as I also remain joined to you. No branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain joined to the vine. In that same way, you can't bear fruit unless you remain joined to me. So as long as the branches stay connected to the vine, they'll continue to bear more and more fruit. Did you catch that? You don't have to try to have good fruit on your own. In fact, Jesus says that it is impossible for you to do it by yourself. 
But when you lean on Jesus, when you stay connected to him in relationship and obey his commands to love one another, you will bear good fruit. Things like love, kindness, peace, and my favorite, joy. Jesus believes in this so much that he kept going, telling his disciples again, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain joined to me and I to you, you will bear a lot of fruit. You can't do anything without me. This is an amazing promise from Jesus. He doesn't say you might produce fruit. He says you will. Then Jesus added, when you bear a lot of fruit, it brings glory to my Father. It shows that you are my disciples. And just like a branch getting nutrients from the vine, when we stay connected to Jesus, we get the love and nutrients we need to have healthy hearts that produce good fruit. That is beautiful. It really is. You know, it's helpful to learn that the way to have a healthy heart and good fruit is by staying connected to Jesus. Exactly. Jesus never leaves us and we can always be connected to him. We can receive his love in our hearts, ask him to help us, and follow his example of how to love people well. That's amazing. Thanks, Kellen. Anytime. See ya. Bye, Kellen. You know, I wonder what kind of tree people would see me as. Well, hopefully a good one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, instead of an apple or orange tree, would people describe me as a kindness tree or a joy tree? I think you can have a lot of good types of fruit. Oh. I, but that's a good thought. Uh, reveal the question. <laughs> How do you want people to describe you? Yeah, do you want to be described like a, a pit crew member, helpful and trustworthy? Or perhaps as someone who is patient and kind. Yeah, or funny or generous. Yeah, there's lots of examples of what fruit could look like. It all comes down to your actions. Yeah, the way you act reflects who you are, so it's good to choose actions that are true to you. Yeah, and who Jesus helps you to be. Yes. Think about it, talk to somebody, and we'll see you next time. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and this was the So and So Show! Yay! Ooh, hello. Yep, I could not. I got something for you. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's a game. Yeah, it's a game? Sort of. I like But that. it's also life. Is it the game of life? No. All right. What am I? Statue? No, 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 no. What kind of tree am oh, I? Oh. I got a bear good fruit, right? <laughs> uh, sure, sure. Uh, palm tree? No. Um, I do have palms, though. Oh, good. Yeah, but I was a close. Palm. I'm not a palm uh, tree. Pear? No. Pear tree? No. Um, you know it's a metaphor, right? You're not actually a tree. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I did it! I'm an apple tree! Where did that? Yeah, I knew I loved apples. See, look at that. Go! How are you doing oh, this? Oh, and a banana! I got a banana! Uh, uh, what's the metaphor? Is that the one with as or like? Hey! What's the big idea? Oh.